The Batwa tribe, part of what is globally known as the Pygmy community, are seen as the ancient dwellers of the forests, and have survived by hunting small game with bows and arrows, spears or snares, and gathering various plants, roots, and fruits that can be found in the tropical rainforests around the world. Their homes were mostly constructed of leaves and branches, and they have normally been nomadic as they follow game for survival. Until recently, these people were thought to continue existing in their forest area here in Uganda as they have for the last thousands of years. Even the Egyptians, over 4,000 years ago, mentioned these groups as a short statue people living near the mountains of the moon who were experts in storytelling and dancing. The Batwa are proud of their heritage and uniqueness and see themselves as having skills and knowledge that many other surrounding tribes do not possess. In 1992, the Buindi Impenetrable Forest and other forest areas were gazetted as national parks and world heritage sites in an attempt to protect the 350 endangered mountain gorillas living in the area. There were at the time about 2,000 Batwa pygmies living within the area who were evicted from their natural habitat. The Batwa have never hunted gorillas, but they were hunters of small game and they were gatherers. They held no land titles, so when they were evicted from the forest, they were given no compensation. Outside the forest, their existence became a major struggle for survival. Several civil society organizations assisted many of the Batwa families in buying land for them and assisting them with seeds, tools, and basic agricultural knowledge. The land given to each family was about one acre, which does not give very much land for the Batwa to cultivate. So in addition to cultivating on their own land, many of the Batwa also sell their labor to other farmers in the area and are paid in low wages or in food. The Batwa themselves have earlier identified health, education, land acquisition, home building and preservation of their culture as advocacy issues. Adri Uganda became engaged in their plight already in 1993 when they started construction on a primary school in Mabuya Miro. This was funded by Adra Sweden. From 1997 to 2000, Adra Uganda implemented an adult literacy program adding functional living skills to help them survive in an environment that was different from the forest where they had been earlier living. About 400 families benefited from this intervention. In 2002 to 2005, 85 families were reallocated from the settlement camp in Kisoro. They were given one acre of land per family, material to construct temporary shelters and start up seeds and inputs. This was funded through Adra International. In 2009 and 2010, Adra Sweden supported the building of a girls' dormitory at Mabuyomero Primary School and had it painted. In addition, broken beds were repaired and new mattresses bought for the girls. A sponsorship program was also running with assistance from the staff at IBM in Sweden and the Danish Children's Fund. A total of 37 students were supported. Some of the students were sponsored to attend vocational training and the first graduation of seven girls and one boy in tailoring and auto mechanics was celebrated in 2010. That same year, on November 12, 2010, The Economist ran a story of Alice Nyamihanda, one of the young Mutwa that Adra Uganda supported in education from primary three to diploma level at Bugema University. I was born in the family of eight people that died when I was still young. And that time, I was I started I, I started my primary level at Gitovu Primary School. By that time, we were paying school fees, but my parents could not afford pay school fees. 
letter an organization called ADRA Adventist Development Relief Agents. They came to my area, then they constructed a school called Maui Emel SDA Primary School. Then I joined that school. I completed my primary level there. Then ADRA supported me in secondary school. I was in Sesame Secondary School. Then 2008, I joined Bugema University. And I was studying development studies and I was doing diploma at Bugema University. From there, I came back to my area. If it was not Adra, I would be not like the way I am. Before, the way I am, I, I don't know how I can say. I was like, maybe like, like a mad person. But the way I am, I can go somewhere. Yeah, people, they can say that, hey, that one is not a mutkwa. Yeah, I'd rather they did a lot of work for me. When they say that that one is not a mutwa, what do people mean then? Because it sounds like it's very negative. Yes, uh, because yeah? when they see me, there is a change. Yeah. You know, they always say that a batwa, they are dirty. Mm -hmm. They look like, they, they are not, they say that they are not human being. Mm -hmm. But when they see me, I look like them. Mm -hmm. So that's why they say that that one is not a mutwa. Mm -hmm. Even what they do, even me, I can do it. Mm -hmm. In 2011, Adra Sweden supported the construction of a water tank and Mabuyomero for the school, but also for the community. The water tank has the capacity of 10,000 liters of water. During the last half of April 2012, ADRA Uganda did an evaluation and assessment exercise with the purpose of indicating how the past initiatives have influenced the Batwa and what the present needs or challenges are. Through conversations with the local leaders and the Batwa themselves, we wanted to find out how the previous initiatives have influenced the Batwa community until today. And this is what we discovered. The Batwa have experienced some, some commendable development with the assistance of different development partners. Like in terms of agriculture, they are now engaged in agricultural production. So the current situation about the Batwa mm -hmm. is, uh, is that it, it's, it, it's different because it, it there, there's an improvement of, from the past, the way they were they improved in such a way that they can intermix, they can mix with, with the non with the non Batwa. The yeah. positive part of it with them, they are receptive. They appreciate themselves and they are ready for change. It's no longer as before. Before when you would go to them, they will tell you, ah, you just leave us alone. You give me money. But now they will tell you, ah, we have to work. You see that perception has now changed. If you called them and told them, please, we want to do this, they will come. Then in the terms of literacy, some actually now many water can read and write with this introduction of far functional adult literacy. We had so many of uh, uh, Batwa participating in far. Yeah, they used to, to form a very good, a big percentage of the far classes. Then, in terms of water sector, actually, it is the Batwa that have now that other big tank during the dry season. And about the Batwa, especially those ones that reside in the Kanawa sub-county in Nijitebe, um, personally I feel that uh, these are now a settled community because um, as compared to the other Batwa, 
especially those ones that reside in town, I see them now becoming very active and uh, making use of the opportunity that was given to them when they are resettled in that area because we see them doing some agriculture and even selling uh, some of the outputs and um, cordially living with the rest of the other communities within that area. So my view of what is happening right now is that we've got communities that have taken on advice and uh, have moved to settle in other areas where they are more productive right now. But we've got another community that lives in town and purely depends on begging. And of course, if you visited their homesteads, you'll find that they are living in bad conditions because you are not able to beg and, and live a good life. The other people who have been resettled in other sub-counties have settled and they are comfortable, they are okay, they are working. But this particular group, they claim that for them they are urban and so they cannot go to live near a forest, they cannot go back to the rural areas. Hey, some of them have been relocated, as you say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But when they go there, mm -hmm. they find life not suitable for them. So they keep coming back here. Mm -hmm. Because here, there is town life, they can move around mm -hmm. and look for what they can do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these ones in town, for them, you know, by the time they evicted them in the forest, they were not used with going the garden digging. So they don't have what to eat. You know, for them, the way they, how, the way they survive, they depend on getting food from some people. So if you give them land, you have to sensitize them how to dig. Even you give them what to eat. Imhabu chala garuye, nukuni bgaabo bata fite. Ayako tukuebge tuli kubona bona. Nha muni manjira, nha asuka, nha safuria, nha burangiti. For sustainability part of it, I, I think we need, if we are able to relocate this community, there is need, for example, for continued advocacy, if we gave them the initial inputs for them to uh, to engage in production, they must be supported by other uh, development agencies and government, of course. It's the government's role to support every community. The issue of attitude mm -hmm. needs to be addressed yeah. first. Yeah. Yeah. Because even if we are talking of relocation, yeah. relocation should happen when they are willing. Mm. Yeah. Because we don't need to force them. Yeah. They should, it should be voluntary mm. and they should be willing to move. Mm. But that means we have to address the issue of mm. their perception, mm -hmm. the way of seeing the world, the way mm. of seeing things. Itakarjans in the Wenari Hinganes, Huntana, Sivanda Famu, Takarjans, a candy man, even by Urugorguans, Nukubera Hongonga Gumanda Hinga, Nyakayans, Yakera. Kayanu and Kazana Murugonga sing a Yuru Hande, and Kasiri Ruhandi, Yokuza, and Jaragutera Murimakwanze, New York Janka Yisiri Ruhande, Ya, Ejetsaza Jera, Konjanga Hingim Yakayans of Murimakwans. The approach should be that we empower them. We may provide some shelter at the beginning as we locate them, but we must focus more on empowering them to be able to fend for themselves and stop the begging uh, mentality because that one has to change. Nuko natwe bakaduhereza iryo taka bari duha bari kuduha n'imbuto dugahinga dukaba nk'abandi dugateza imbere mbe ntituze turirirwa nkuko tubunga gutsa turi gusabirizwa ngo runaka duhero naka duhe nuko natwe dugatera imbere dukaba nk'abandi bantu. Besides the obvious challenge with the Batwa in Kisoro town, local leaders and the Batwa themselves from four other settlements pointed out the present challenges affecting their communities. Some of the challenges they do face, as you may know, there is lack of land, mm -hmm. lack of agricultural inputs, that those are the seeds, lack of agricultural tools, those are hoys, pangas, etc. Level, at their community level, mm -hmm. you'll find that the, the, the peace that was given to a certain couple, yeah. today they are 
son has grown up and has got a, a, a wife as well. So the two families now are occupying the same land. Mm -hmm. Like one time I've been with, of recent I've been with Star Southwest mm -hmm. and we went with Alice mm -hmm. and we're asking those ones up there mm -hmm. where they would wish to, we were on needs assessment. They mm -hmm. said we need land number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, the challenge they have, mm -hmm. the first one is land. Mm -hmm. If they can get land, Mm -hmm. They can be like other people. Mm -hmm. They can plant crops there. They can get school fees for their children. Itaka, how could you get to the next one? Ubu, Turukuhinga, Turukweza Mumuhogo, Turukweza Mibishumba, Turukweza Munuburo. No, no. Mutko Kaba Yagache. Arikubu, Tukusaba, who come as you? Mutkonjere, a candy to Korahagari. The challenge they have, another one is lack of school fees. That one is the challenge also to the Batwa. If, if their children are educated, they can get employment. Maybe in the future they can be like other people. They need education like any other person. Exactly. They, are the right they need they need to have inclusive education. Mm. They, are, they also have to fight for national cake, mm. which is the education for everybody. Mm. And therefore, I feel proud when I see the Watwa in the schools. Mm -hmm. And I feel proud when I when I uh, when I see the concern you have them, you have over them. And I really Thank you very much for that, and I, I urge you really to continue supporting them. No, ne, kwa litu gusaba kujirango, ah, mudu sabi gufasha, kukomu sangu mbidu korela, abana wabatu kapa wasi bakabona, sponsor si ipo yoku bafasha, yaba bitu mudu kore kiri 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 kiri. Mpambi vitarayu kabana wataja kujuri. Mkubwa na njine vgomru kureba hano nuga na buto ya imhamvi vitera kutaja kushuri harijacho thoraba tuaburai ubugumia na mji thondo harafju kanga karabaje kushuri ariri guame zina bi ikandi nzari ri kumudia na vgon hagomba kureba mji thabo ngo yigenes inzara ni yibi tumaga abana ba taja kushuri literacy do some know how to read and write our our major intention is now we want to see the, all of them know how to read and write it is not a matter of seeing some sections then we also want to see many of their children attending school Kungu. Tubo nyindi ikazi katuhukura. Tuwa agenda na atuwe tura nika nginza andiko kabani. Uhungubu nuko ya chendere yeho. Vara tusezire ye vara taha. Nuhone huko huko muje. Mutuongari hindi. Kirasi. Tuhugu kirigwerimu. There are others who need the reading and writing, of course, because we apparently have, we have 500 and 5,000 400 and something learners mm -hmm. and that one doesn't explain that, 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 that doesn't solve the illiteracy. You should still come with because there are those ones. Some lag mm -hmm. behind, some dropped out. We had mm -hmm. actually always have high dropouts mm -hmm. and we need also to encourage those ones to come back on board, learn and then mm -hmm. as well uh, as, well as um, um, stepping ahead to the functional part of it. When it comes to the issues of health and sanitation, there is still need for further sensitization in practices and attitudes to alleviate diseases and lower mortality rates, especially among young children. Then when it comes to health, they are attending, they, they, they go for health services. Every parish, mm -hmm. every parish has a health facility. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, the issue we have is personnel. Mm -hmm. Health workers are limited, are very few actually. Mm -hmm. And it is worse with midwives. Mm -hmm. We have 
big challenge to attract midwives. Akabjara kandi nabwo akiriye mu rugo nuko agakira neza agomba kuguma mu rugo cyangwa se yabakiza akakomezamo bagomba kumuhindikanyiriza mu rwari. Yawa contraceptive prevalence rate is, is still low mm -hmm. at around 8% and that leads to high high uh, fertility rate. Mm. Has, and you know for them they really produce. <laughs> that one, their fertility rate is very high. Very very, they are very active, you see? <laughs> Just a household having like five kids. The, the battle communities, mm -hmm. I may agree or disagree. It might be due to high infant, and infant mortality rate. Yeah. It's true. Because every time I saw these women, they are carrying babies. Yeah. But you fail to see the population grow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so you wonder. They must be dying yeah. at high rate. Okay. No. So that they... I don't think it is uh, less productive. Yeah, another issue would be the toilet facilities. Oh, okay. Yeah. You find when someone has more than two families in a home and maybe there is only one toilet in the community. Mm -hmm. You find it a bit difficult, you know, people using it at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they go maybe in the bush, of course the end result is people yeah. contract the diseases, especially mm -hmm. on terrains. Mm. Hari gihe cyabanyesa kubaza bakadvuga ati nyabu namushakisha ibyorone kabaga ako kanya kubishakisha ugasanga bari myako kanya ariko kugira ngo babyubakeho then in terms of hiv aids we are scared Because by getting involved in those extra marital sex and whatever we think with this aid scratch, many may also be affected. Yeah. Unfortunately, they are used by some personalities who have certain um, feelings that um, they have certain perception that uh, when they are being used for sexual relations, then it, is, it serves as a curative system for certain diseases like backache, like uh, it can also treat them from HIV AIDS, so that one has also become very a very big problem. So there is a need for further sensitization against such and also encourage testing. If testing so that they can know their status. We also found out that the Batwa's vulnerability is caused within the community through gender inequality but also by other communities which sometimes take advantage of their poor circumstances. We have also the, 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 the gender issues where women are still backward much as we try, but you know development which is one-sided or laid and dom do, do, dominated by men, we feel women are still down. Uh, however, they are facing several challenges one, these people are generally poor, they are very poor, and because of that poverty, they are being used by the local communities, either in steering, either being used at a very low cost. No, ne, I'm going to go to the bank, 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 I'm going to like for instance, a motor can be used in a day at only 1,000 or 2,000 when the rest of the other communities are paid 5,000 to 10,000 per day. So their labor is actually exploited by the local communities. And uh, the, the other second thing is that they are not fully integrated in the communities because um, the moment they try to socialize with the other communities, they, they are not fully welcomed. And uh, 
that tends to make them also become some kind of social misfits within the communities. Through further investigation, we found out that some Batwa were satisfied with the wages they received, but many prefer to be paid in food, as that means they at least get one proper meal per day. If we look at the overall population, they are still disadvantaged in this regard. In our assessment, we visited quite a few Batwa personally. Through their stories, we could recognize and empathize with their challenges on the personal level. Here are some of their stories. Down the mountain slope from Abuyamiro Primary School, we find Kate Dusubis' home. The house that Kate lives in is simple, very functional and clean. She grinds her corn and other things on the grinding stone outside her house. Kate is very grateful for what Adra did to the Batwa community in this area. She remembers what the place was like, like a wilderness, when at first they came here. But thanks to the support of Adra, Kate managed to make it her home. <laughs> Kate lives alone with her children, and the only way she can survive is through planting food in her small garden plot and by selling her labor to local people at very often too low wages. Between the majestic mountain ranges of Congo and Rwanda, there is a Batwa settlement called Jitebe. Besides the conversations with the group, we also personally talked to, among others, one lady called Kazia Mahoro. She's 40 years old and the mother of five children. She traced back the history of eviction from the forest and the hardships in the Niakabanda resettlement camp. After Adra bought land for them, her hopes for a better future were awakened. <laughs> She also explained that they still have some challenges. Their livelihood possibilities and land ownerships are very scarce, and they are often forced to work for local communities for small portions of food or very low wages. While she was still a child, her father taught her beekeeping skills. We found a small beekeeping entrepreneurship right in her yard. Mm-hmm. 
ngo bari gatangira bakakura mu musharuro bakaja kugugurisha tukibonera mu byamba Kezia recognizes her need for further education she believes that through further empowerment she and her community could eventually reach a better foundation for a sustainable development <laughs> The issue of the Batua people uh, is something that should be treated as an international agenda. And uh, we should be uh, looking at what kind of deliberate effort should we have in order to address the lifestyle of the Batua people. Because uh, the worry is that uh, us being a minority, it is an ethnic group that might disappear in the future because there is no deliberate effort to look at the way of life and how because right now they don't have where to stay they don't have land they don't have they are just like they are displaced people but where we don't have even some kind of interventions which are strategic uh, to look at uh, how we can develop them. So that is, that is the worry, yeah. uh, which I think should be looked at at a, an international and a national level. Yes. yes.